Oh, he's still going. Oh no. I am on a mission to turn $500 into $1 million. And one of the ways that I'm doing that is by growing a massive adult recreational sport and social event company. Because believe it or not, these adult leagues are actually big business. And today, we're hoping to cash in. But there's one big problem, and that's that we don't have any customers yet. What's up everybody, this is Corey with Mission Side Hustle, and today we're gonna be kicking off some leagues with our new company, Sporting Social. And in the process, we're gonna try to make some cash. Now you see, I have developed an ironclad strategy to grow this business to astronomical levels. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret of how it's done. Word of mouth. So in this scenario, if you can picture my business partner, Chris, and myself, that's me right there, the really tall one. All we have to do is get two people to sign up. Those people are gonna come out, have a lot of fun, and get two more people to sign up. Those two people will have fun and get two more people. And so on and so forth until you have a completely legitimate and not controversial business model at all. Oh, shit. So, as I was saying, word of mouth is a massively powerful way that a business can grow its sphere of influence organically. Sphere, not pyramid. But before we jump into the deep end of this business, which is running leagues, as that requires many people for it to function, we have to build a base. And luckily for us, we caught a huge break and we were able to partner with one of St. Pete's biggest and most iconic bars and restaurants. Ferg Sports Bar and Grill on Central Avenue, downtown St. Pete. These guys caught wind of what Chris and I were up to and they actually helped us secure sponsorships for multiple cornhole boards to get made for us. I mean, seriously, these boards are no joke. They're super high quality. They're co-branded with other companies like White Claw, Miller, Ferg's, and of course, this was a huge come up for us. And for that, we owe Ferg's a massive thank you because getting these cornhole boards unlocked the next part of our plan, which was tournaments. The great thing about tournaments is it allows you to put on an event, but not need to have as many people as you would need for a league. So for us, this was a chance to start building our base of players without having any programs online, not filling them, and then risk having to cancel them, which is always the worst case scenario. So that's what we did. And what happened next surprised even me. All right, so we're just finishing our setup now. Got about, I don't know, 45 minutes till everybody gets here. So we got the boards out, gonna get a tent set up, get some music going, and uh, we'll get the show on the road, huh? Yeah, now we're talking. Nice to meet you. You too. Nice to meet you, Corey. Yeah. I like the interview we had here. Oh yeah, yeah, is it? Lots of confidence. Yeah. All right, so in this first course, we're gonna have Nicholas, and we're gonna get your partner here in a second. Again, suck my bags. Who sucked my bags? There you go, there they are. Come on down, suck my bags. Nicholas, you can stand by this one. I have no comment. Not the best cornhole player. We had a great turnout. I would say even better than we expected. When it was all said and done, we had over 30 people come out and play. But the best part though is something completely unexpected. While Chris and I were running our own cornhole tournament, we actually had somebody reach out to us and ask if we could run a cornhole tournament for them for a fundraising event. So the very next week, we did it all over again just for a totally separate group. If you added the amount of people that played on both days, we probably had over 120 people play cornhole in two weeks. Now for our tournament, we charged by the team and then for the fundraiser event, we were paid a flat fee. So that at the end of everything, we had actually made a little over a thousand dollars in revenue, but that wasn't really the point. Ultimately, the tournament served one purpose and one purpose only. Anybody want to guess? Word of mouth. Everything was going exactly as planned and we could not wait to see our registrant numbers start blowing up. So you can imagine my sheer panic when that didn't happen. Hey, what's up, man? We have a problem. What's that? We're gonna have to cancel. We only have like five people for the soccer leagues, so we're not gonna have enough to do that one. Uh, I need you to try to divert them to kickball because we need to make that happen no matter what. At this point in time, things got extremely real for us. It was either make it or break it. We were either gonna become kickball kingpins or let this thing flop. Sitting around passively wasn't an option anymore. We had to take action right away. We diverted as many of the soccer signups that we had to cancel into our kickball program. We got on social media and made Facebook posts and Instagram posts. We called every number in our phones to see if they'd come out and play. Hey, Grandma, how are you? What do you, uh, what do you do next Thursday? 
The number you have called has been disconnected. And all of that was with one goal in mind. So it appears I hit something in the road and then my tire's flat, but luckily we got a lot of tire plugs from our junk removal days. Okay, now we can go. Uh, where are you at? Oh, I see you. I'm coming in, I'm coming in hot. Yeah, look at it. Look at this beautiful field. Let's go. <laughs> you look the part, man. Hey, um, dude. Custom made, baby. Look at that drip custom up made. from the from the top to the bottom. Just kick. All right, you ready to go? As ready as I'll ever be. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Boom. I'm gonna carry the balls. Well, I'll carry the scoreboard too. Why not? Oh, I almost lost it. Wow. Clean. Get in there, dude. Clean her up. There's an ant on there. Dispose of that. Thank you. Play ball. No dusty plate on our watch. <laughs> okay, so we've got pretty much all of our stuff set up to ready to go here. We paid the city to come out earlier. Uh, we're doing the field rental, of course, for the field here. We thought well, when you rent the field, it came with everything, but that's actually not the case. When you rent a field, all you get is the field. You don't get bags. You don't get lines. And the kicker is you're not allowed to line your own fields. So they kind of have you in a bit of a pinch. So anyway, we got a lot of stuff lined. It looks really good. Everyone's gonna be showing up here in a little bit. We put a lot of work into getting this league ready. We've had to put rules together. We had to get shirts made. We had to get kickballs. We had to get everything ready to go. And tonight, it's finally ready to happen. But I think Chris is super nervous. Hey buddy, on a scale of one to 10, how confident do you feel about this? A 10. That's, that's good. I respect that number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, calling the captains together right now, going over the rules, getting started. All right, so you got Cora and I officiating the game today. Okay. I'll be behind the plate, Cora will be on the field. Boy, girl, boy, girl, 10 people. It is heads, you we'll are home or away. Uh, we'll take the field. All right. I've never umpired a game of anything in my life, but today we do. Next game is starting right now, and then we'll be out of here. Woo! Oh, there's a clean hit. There's a clean hit. Y'all have a good one. It was awesome. Yeah. 
We could not believe this went as well as it did. To be honest with you guys, Chris and I were so nervous getting started with this league. We were going into this with no experience and only having three teams signed up instead of four. But I'll tell you guys what, we had so much fun and everybody had so much fun that we have another team lined up to join us starting next week. So we're gonna have four teams going forward. So this begs the question for some of you, how much money can you make doing this? Well, I'll give you a broad breakdown because every season is a little bit different, but this is generally what you would expect at a minimum, I'd say. By the time the season is finished, we'll have four teams playing, paying $800 a piece. That's a total revenue of $3,200. Now, of course, there's going to be some cost too. So if we assume 10 people per team and $7 per shirts, that's 40 shirts for 280 bucks. The field rental for 16 hours total is 560. We also pay 50 bucks a day to have the fields lined and the bags put out there. And then down the road, Chris and I are not going to be umpires, so we would have to hire umpires. Let's say they make 20 bucks a game, that's two umpires for two games, that's $640. So that means that hypothetically, just by putting the league together and having umpires run it, we could still make $1,320 per eight week league. And that might not sound like a lot until you have 10 or 20 or 30 different programs running all at the same time in different places. But I'll tell you what, we're gonna keep growing this thing. I know it's got some legs and I've got my eyes set on targets much bigger than where we're just currently at right now. So I hope you guys join me for the journey. I appreciate you so much if you already have been. If you're not, make sure you subscribe, like the video if you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next week.